to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh! <laughs> okay. Welcome okay. in. <laughs> that was like Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Oh! An A for effort. Andy. Yeah. I knew today would be, I don't know, sometimes you wake up in the morning and you just know it's not going to go well, and then I have to decide, am I going to try it? My You're, voice is just going through something. Yeah, it's a, this is, there comes a stage in every man's life no. where your voice starts really? changing, and uh, you know, you're going to you're gonna find some, some cool things happening oh. to your body. <laughs> is it a second puberty? Yes. Is that yeah. what that is? It's yes. actually I'm re- well re- past reversed. it. <laughs> uh, yeah, you don't get hair in strange places. You lose yep. it in strange yes. places. Yes, you do. Oh, all right. Uh, welcome into the Fantasy Footballers. Andy, Mike, and Jason with you Tuesday, September 24th. Waiver Day. Lots of names to talk about. Get you ready for your waiver pickups. How much fab you should you should drop. Whether you burn that waiver spot and whether some of the free agents that put up big numbers are going to keep doing it. Or whether they're landmines. Yeah. I mean, it, you you necessarily are taking a risk because every waiver day is generally the result of either injury or a singular performance by a player that moves him from should be on the waiver wire to should be on a roster. And so you're taking a, a, a Or in chance. the case of Jawan Jennings, should be on the waiver wire, is the number one wide receiver I thought you were in, say the, Hall of in Fame. the National Football yeah. League. Yeah, yeah. I mean, better performance by Jawan Jennings than the career of Debo and the career of Brandon Ayuk. Well, yeah, he's clearly their wide receiver one now. I don't know. Ayuk looked like about a wide receiver four in that game. Yeah. He's still <laughs> got target share. Is it? Is that, is, a, is that good or is that bad? <laughs> because... I, it's all it's always good when you actually get targets. He had ten. He had ten targets. Now is it good? That's that's sensational. Also, Brock Purdy was playing out of his mind. Brock Purdy looked great in that game when targeting Jawan Jennings. It's a weird one. I mean, I don't know. You could blame it on a lack of camp. And, you could yeah. blame it on human nature. The bag. Oh, the bag don't gets blame, deposited. Don't blame it on that one. I mean, don't blame it. That I, one. That I, one is too long term. That that's what we call the gala day. <laughs> I I fully blame it on the no camp. Did he stay at a gala day express? <laughs> is this the problem? <laughs> he stayed at a gala day and express. <laughs> yes. Um. Better do something soon, Brandon. But the targets, the targets would be the Amari Cooper argument of the last two weeks, yes. where. Amari Cooper's numbers were there target-wise. He wasn't connecting. He had some drops, just like Brandon Ayuk. This, and, this isn't where I'm like, hey, he got 33% of the targets. Like That's that's an insane number. Wait, and then you like if you look at the Colts, like, hey, this guy, Pittman got so much of the target share, but it was only like a few passes. It was 33% of the targets and 10 targets. I do think it's going to turn around. Tomorrow we're having a trade-for-trade-away show. Very excited for that. So maybe his name will come up. Maybe. It could be in either category. I don't know. <laughs> uh, we would like to remind you, especially today, that if you head over to jointhefoot.com and you sign up to support the podcast, not only do you get an extra episode of the show every week and a ton of premium tools and resources, but you get access to the new Ultimate Dashboard, which is a lineup optimizer. I, uh, I had a night last night. I dropped my son off at practice. Pickleball practice. They're, they're doing that now, huh? And uh, there's an outback in the parking lot, and th this is where I watch the Monday Night Football games now. And so, you know, I'm over there, and I put the word out onto Twitter. I was like, hey, what do you think about the dashboard so far? And a lot of people were saying their favorite thing about using the Ultimate Dashboard is managing multiple leagues. It gives mm. you the kind of express lane to waiver pickups that are individualized to each league, spot start options and then your lineup gets optimized based on our projections every week yeah i so heard a lot of a lot of spot starts in their league for Jawan jennings it was you know they, they used that tool and it said hey you should you should maybe pick this guy up off of waivers to start him and they did and it worked out pretty well yeah i had a real like i'm in too many leagues so i i was a believer in jennings and i picked him up 
in pretty much all of the leagues. But then I had to stare down those start sit decisions in all of them, and I played them in about half, and I sat them in about half. And had I not sat them, those would have been all wins. So that <laughs> that was a hard a hard thing to go through. But let's talk about um, let's talk about Monday Night Football. I enjoyed the heck out of both games happening at the same time. Well, I, you, well, you were at the Outback. Yeah. So you had both games on. Ha- the- hashtag not a sponsor. <laughs> Seems Could like be. it all of a sudden. Hey, but, who doesn't love a blooming onion? But I was I was <laughs> sitting there and I wanted the input. I wanted the double input when a commercial break was going on. Like Yeah. And the I had the phone and it worked fine. Both games were on. Now, one game was over in about 15 seconds. And I'm not I'm not sure that Josh Allen couldn't have thrown for nine touchdowns in this game. Because he was unbelievable. I mean, he threw for four first half touchdowns. He did whatever he wanted to do. That that was the phrase I was gonna say. Just whatever he wanted. He just he dropped back and he goes, Who do I want to give a touchdown to on this play? Right. And then he made that happen. He divvied him out. He sure did. I mean, it it was an incredible James Cook, performance. You get a touchdown. Should have had two. Yeah, that's Ray Davis, you get a touchdown. Wait, Ray Davis got one too? Khalil no, no, Shakir, no. you get a touchdown. Dalton Kincaid, you get a touchdown. Ty Johnson, you get a touchdown. Keon Coleman, you get a touchdown. And Keon Coleman had one catch. He was benched in the first quarter, apparently for some disciplinary actions. Yeah, if you uh, if you wondered, like me, right when that game started, I was like, wait, where's Keon Coleman? Because I, I, I thought this would be a good matchup for him, uh, a heavy man defense, and then he's not in the game, and then the next drive he's not in the game. It's like, what? What happened? Why is it apparently showed up late and got the bench? And then Daniel Jones played pretty bad for the Jaguars. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see the play where he spun out of nothing? There have was, you got to see that play yet? I have, I have seen it. There was a little hint of pressure. Well, yeah, j- <laughs> pressure and spinning need to be kind of connected. My guys like you can't Madden just spin all the time by accident. Well, okay, he, someone hit the button. Yeah. Okay. It happens. Trevor Lawrence looked awful. Travis Etienne did the best he could do under the circumstances. 11 for 68 is great. It was pretty – wow. It was a very clear not timeshare in this. That was the one takeaway. It was like Etienne, 11 carries. Tank Bigsby had two. This was not – Bigsby big. actually did have a couple other runs that got called back on penalty. So they, they don't count, but they were like – they were both really good well, runs. He looked good, but I'm just saying the split yeah, – yeah, yeah. The split and who was on the field, who was given the opportunity, he, was predominantly Etienne. So, did, do you feel confident in that, or because he was just coming back from an injury? Yeah, yeah. I mean, right now, I I still think it's Etienne as okay. as the clear leader of the timeshare. Yeah, and he's a good player. Etienne is not. This is not a Rashad White situation where, you know, the underlying metrics for Travis Etienne are that he is, you know, not a good between the tackles runner and can't get it done. So, to me, his role is safe. It's just a matter of. You know, how complimentary will Bigsby be? Sure. On the other side, James Cook, Mike's my guy, continues to We're looking good. To dominate. And then if you had to start a wide out or a pass catcher, let's put it that way for Buffalo rest of the season. Congratulations, you did it. <laughs> it just feels like Khalil Shakir is the yep. lock in that regard, which yep. is kind of the way that you know it looked to begin the season. But it was nice to see Dalton Kincaid redeem the tight end position slightly. <laughs> Well, and then slightly. <laughs> the, I mean, he had to have been like the tight end three on the week or something. Yeah, he's definitely top five. He had a touchdown. The I'll go look. Yeah, I mean, he's probably with, tight end with, five. with yeah. Kincaid. This is two weeks in a row where to start the game, he was an incredibly important piece of this offense. He was down the field. He was used in screen games. It was like, okay, let's go. This is Dalton Kincaid. And then game's over. One quarter in, game's over. The Bills are too good right now. They are too good right now. So Their defense is too good right now. I do think Kincaid is someone we should be not worried about. That that first week performance, you were really, really, really worried. The next game, you super involved and then out of con- you know, and then out of hand. This game, super involved. Can and we then get out a full game? Can we get a full Doubtful. game where Buffalo has to pass regularly at a normal, like neutral? game script we got on the road against baltimore on the road against houston okay those are okay. on the road against the jets so we got Let's go. three road games here all right uh the other game monday night football game number two featured another my guy Jaden daniels who went 21 for 23 a 91 percent completion percentage talking to you anthony richardson <laughs> Near 254 perfection. and two another one on the ground looked in complete command of the commanders 
and it was awesome. He was so calm, cool, and collected in the pocket. You never worried. Every time it was fourth and short, you're like, with his legs, you know, the rollout and the option of, hey, let's just leak Terry McLaurin, you know, on that side of the line, and I'll run on this side of the line, and you defender, you pick which one you want me, which way you want me to pick up the first. It was really well executed game plan. Um, their offense looked unstoppable, and if you look at the metrics around the NFL, their offense is like the number one offense. Did you it's see the tweet from Jordan Schultz? I did not. This is the first time in the Super Bowl era ever that a team has gone two consecutive games with no turnovers and no punts. Wow. No turnovers, no punts. Yeah, their offense For is... Cliff Kingsbury. Do you have the hate blockers? I mean, I, I don't I, have them on. You don't me, have but... those glasses. Uh, Al Borland, can you throw those on? Oh crap! Oh, he, he threw, threw, threw them at you. To you. I heard throw. It was too late. Man. <laughs> I guess I'm the. I guess you I'm are the, Cliff. I'm the yeah. Cliff Kingsbury uh, doppelganger. Congratulations, Cliff Let's Kingsbury. Let's just put these on while we talk about Cliff and that offense. But th there was a big injury. Um, Austin Eckler, who was looking he, awesome. He looked so good. There was, dude. There was a play. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if you remember exactly what I'm talking about. Where it was just, it was a, it was a lateral cut. Was it one of but my play calls? It was, yeah. Thank yeah, you. Great Claire. call. But I mean, he looked like he teleported. His his sideways movement was so twitchy. It was like, and hey, Austin, as a kick yes. returner, as a kick returner. I mean, he's looking incredible. He had a huge one last week that was called back, and then a, and a huge one this week that that so great. Great idea, Cliff, in putting him in on special teams. Austin Eckler is awesome, excellent. That's what I do with my backup running backs. <laughs> but also, congratulations on the wild call that I – look, I'm I'm more of aggressive in my tendencies, and I still would not have made this call. But, yeah. I mean, it worked. The you know yep. the, the pass at the end of the game to just completely seal the game deep to Terry McLaurin in the end zone. One-on-one, -on -one, baby. I mean – When he's in one-on-one, -on -one, I tell Jaden, chuck it. And Jaden <laughs> – well, I mean, Jayden, we did this week. So we thrown, appreciate that. You know, the the balls are just incredible. They're crisp. They're accurate. They are. <laughs> <laughs> look, they're they everything. Are, are they? <laughs> they're everything you want balls to be. Okay, so just keep keep digging. You'll get out eventually. <laughs> um, listen, uh, the sad part of the 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 end of that story for Eckler is that he was concussed in this yeah. game. And I believe he stayed. Um, he didn't fly right away. Yeah, he didn't fly right away. So, so Eckler is, you know, in trouble. Terry McLaurin, four for a hundred and a touchdown. You have to, you have to breathe as a fantasy football manager in general. I can remember going back, and there was this year where we called Matt Forte a bust on the show, and Matt Forte came out and he scored, and he looked great for two, three weeks. And so we were under fire. But then the entire rest of the season was a completely different story for Matt Forte. And so you have to breathe anyway in fantasy. Three weeks is a short period of time with a, a, a wide, you know, a divergence of, High of variance. opponents, right? Your, your defenses that you face. We think you underperform, but then that defense really is good. And we think you overperform, but then that, you know what I mean? And then when a rookie is part of the picture on top of the, of the, the three weeks... It's even different. Like, Jane Daniels, oh, they're never going to throw it downfield. Really? His whole career is defined by two games? He did this game. Four for 100 to Terry McLaurin. So, you know, you're going to figure out what you're capable of doing. You're going to protect your rookie quarterbacks early. You're going to put them into positions to take chances later on. And that was also a really, really good back-and-forth game. Now, on the other side, let me, the Bengals right now are 0-3. Crazy. The, the bungles are back, baby. The bungles are back. And listen, here here's the headline. They're going to play Carolina next week. They've lost to New England. Okay. New England's projected win total was what? It was like four and a half, I think. Okay. They've lost to the commanders. Their projected win total. Maybe five and a half. Maybe five and a half. Carolina. In Carolina, Andy Dalton. This is not a guaranteed win of any kind. And then they have to play Baltimore. So if they don't beat Carolina next week. They could be sitting 0 5. Their defense is really, really struggling. The 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 Bengals have, you know, look. I mean, I don't want to take anything away from Washington and what Jaden Daniels did and what the game plan you called, Cliff. Um, Thank you. It was great. But the Bengals are struggling. They've got some injuries back there, and they are not putting up strong fights. 
And and yes, this was a good fantasy day for Joe Burrow, who's the start of the week, 324 and 3. We just talked about the fact we hadn't had a 303 other than Andy Dalton. We got it with Joe Burrow. They lost the ball game. Jamar Chase, 6 for 118 and 2. This is what you should do against the Commanders. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so he did it, which was nice to see. And then Yoshi Voss got a touchdown. T. Higgins did nothing. It's three for 39. He had an end zone target that actually that Burrow screwed up. Higgins, it should have been an easy touchdown. Their red him. zone. Was They're, it, oh, my gosh. Was their an red issue. zone. Yeah, their I mean, red zone offense is oh, it's atrocious. This they have is no idea what to do. In the red zone is where they miss Joe Mixon. They really, really do. I mean, Joe Mixon was very important in the red zone last year for them. And, and every time I see them give it to Zach Moss, it's like and he, he was he was okay. He had a touchdown. I mean, he had a, he had a good, good fantasy. He had a good day. fantasy yeah. game. It was the start of the week. Great, but he did not got that look, garbage, Tuddy. He did yeah. not look great, and he's he's just yeah. not Joe Mixon. See, I, I have a difference of opinion. I thought Zach Moss looked fine. I thought like I I had several times where he he the he took off running. I was like, oh man, they gave Chase Brown another carry because he he Chase he, Brown was great. Yeah, Chase, Chase Brown, Brown had, but juice. it's just like Chase Brown's fast. But I'm saying there was a couple runs to me where I, was, I didn't think it was Zach Moss. I thought it was Brown. I think so, it was Brown. No, it no. <laughs> <laughs> I, so I mean, I have a, I just I I disagree with that. I think Zach Moss has played well. I think that the the play calling has been the problem. Play calling's in, been a real in the problem. red zone, and they they lost their uh, their right tackle. Yeah, Trent Brown. So he like, patella tendon tear. It was so he will be out for. That's not going to help year. the running game. No, or the protection of Joe so, Burrow. Uh, I would say, Andy, while you're saying no, take the breath. I would also with Washington, like it's it's very exciting. But the last two games was the Giants and the Bengals. Now you now they go on the road against Arizona. They play in Cleveland, Baltimore. So the next three are they're more difficult on the defensive side of the ball. I don't think Arizona is any more difficult than the Giants on the defensive okay. side of the ball. Giants have a pretty good pass rush. Yeah, Arizona has been uh, – they're, they're in the upper echelon through three games in terms of, I think, schedule adjusted or points given up, but I agree. No pass rush. It should be a fun game in Arizona. Yeah, that, that's going to be one you want pieces of. All right, hey, let's talk. Actually, sorry, real quick. I hate to cut in. I know we got a full show, but, Mike, that project that you had us work on that you said to move to top priority, Yes, we got that done for you. Oh, oh yes, no. excellent. What's happening? Oh, guys, so did you watch the Sunday night football game? Atlanta, yeah, Kansas City, yeah. Uh -huh. So halftime, this is not good. Oh, it, at halftime, I oh. was I was so inspired by what took place at halftime. Let's go. Oh, you're talking about when Arthur Blank, after a bold self nomination, the fantasy footballer's ring of honor is proud to induct the fantasy hitman. I did Mike it, Mike Wright. I did it, everybody. <laughs> the first ever fantasy footballers ring of honor member. Wow. Oh my god. I have so and many people to thank. How much I mean, I don't know how much time I have here. As much as you need. It's your show. This was So Deucers, thank you. Uh Andy, Jason, thank you You're for welcome, for yeah. lifting me up to this wow. place where I could finally <laughs> achieve my dream of getting into the ring of honor by myself. Incredible. You inducted yourself. So you're well, the yeah. only one. Well, yeah, oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'll probably shut it down after this. But that thank is, you guys, I your support, the fans. Wow. I could not have got here without everyone really helping. It was a team effort to get me into my ring of honor. Wow! Thank congratulations! You, Can we yeah, give them a round of applause? Yeah, yeah, the people love it. Can we give them a round of applause? Un unbelievable! Wow! You were inspired by hey. Arthur Blank himself. Has that happened before? Has an owner put himself in the ring of honor <laughs> while still alive and you know owning when you're the team? That's the thing. When you're dead, yeah. Well, the, let somebody else do it when you're dead. I think I think Papa Bidwell is in our Ring of Honor for yeah, the Cardinals, but died. that's yeah. <laughs> this this is like ah. Thought I mean, formerly Mike probably thought he had to die. I did. And I didn't we, know I could do this. <laughs> and then you were inspired by Arthur Blank. Yeah. Wow, there's, Mike. There's no rules when it comes to celebrating yourself. This is good to know because we I'm, should start an a podcast <laughs> award company. <laughs> oh, that's a great idea. Wow, oh, thank, you, thank you, Arthur. Thank you for uh, taking the Mike time. Mike really was uh, taken back <laughs> by that <laughs> ceremony. I will say this. When I heard that Arthur Blank was being inducted into the their ring of honor, the the first second I heard about it, all I thought was, what? <laughs> <laughs> what? Are, what? And uh, like, The I, owner is inducting himself into the ring of honor? Did he hand himself some sort of award? <laughs> and, and I tweeted out about it. And, and, 
people from Atlanta were quick to, they're like, hey, Blank has done a lot of good stuff here. I'm like, that's all fine and well. But the optics are, you put yourself in your own ring of honor. <laughs> it's very, I mean, oh. it's not fun. No, it's not funny at all, actually. It's very serious business. Me and me and Arthur. Oh, yeah. Ring yeah, of yeah. honor, no, guys. No, no, super legit. <laughs> all right, let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. You know, now that I think about it, there might be another in, in, inductee pretty, <laughs> pretty soon. Yeah. Yeah, one or two. Yeah, there might be one or two more. Incredible. We'll have to really think about who to put in there. I mean, he had to have just been sitting there looking at his <laughs> ring of honor going, why am I not in here? I own the team. He's just jealous of these players. <laughs> Where's my name? <laughs> wow. All right. Uh, Sean McVay told reporters Cooper Cup's going to miss another week at least. Uh, it's probably going to be more than that. But week four, no Cooper Cup. Najee Harris, yesterday on the show, I talked about him having an opportunity. They've got offensive line issues, and then right after the show, we found out he was uh, he had his arm in a sling. Now, per Jordan Schultz, Najee's expected to be fine and likely to be ready for the game. Yeah, I mean, if you watch the end of the game, he was fine. <laughs> like he didn't, you know, he was he he didn't get injured on his last run. He was there, at, you know, at the at the very end. So, um, it, it's good to hear. I think we can be confident with Najee. All right, uh, Sam Laporta day to day with a sprained ankle. It was a low sprained ankle. We found out. <laughs> yeah, what was all this median or right side? I don't yeah, know. What was all this ovary talk? <laughs> <laughs> that was only you. Well, still, it was wrong. <laughs> well, it had nothing to do with his uterus at all. That's uh, the way to be accountable. Yeah. Christian McCaffrey is seeing a specialist in Germany for, oh, no. for his Achilles, and I had to laugh when Mike shared that he might be put in, <laughs> he might put in a be put in a dash boot. Yeah, very Thank nice tweet. Deuce Alley is enjoying today's episode of the show. I mean, how do you think I got in the Ring of Honor, guys? It's, oh, it's, it was the dash boot. Killer tweets like that. So uh, I have seen some some information from medical professionals out there. I checked in with Betts. Our medical guy did see if he agreed with it, and and he did for the most part. It was uh, Jeff Mueller who had put out a really thorough thread about it. You can go check it out. But essentially what they're saying is he will probably be out, like Bet's his best guess about timeline, because after you get the treatment, you really have to let it heal, let it recover. Uh, so Bet's is guessing week 10 right now. Brock. Which is after they have a week nine bye. So again, these are we we don't know for sure, but this is the speculation. yeah. And the, and the reason he's going to Germany is because he can basically get a higher dose than he can get here. Yeah, so, they are, they are they're top of the line over there. Um, the, yesterday we talked about if you're the Jordan Mason manager, like maybe going out and trying to really trade for Christian McCaffrey to secure that spot. Feels like you don't want to give up that much now because no. it's gonna lower it's, your it's price. It's gonna be a while. Brock Purdy has back soreness day to day. And then a reminder from Matthew Betts, who, by the way, you get an injury blitz podcast, an extra episode of that as well as a member of jointhefoot.com. So every week, Matthew Betts jumps on, talks about the injuries, talks about the prognosis for these players with a, um, what we call a medical education. Mm -hmm. Something we he doesn't even have to use AI. He, he's, he's <laughs> not a lot of uterus talk, um, but he wanted to point out that there are some, IR players eligible to return to practice soon, not guaranteed to return, eligible to return. Clyde Edwards-Alaire, who could play a factor in the backfield in Kansas City. So, to, and remind Clyde Edwards-Alaire was a this was a mental health thing. He was he's been dealing with some PTSD from events in his past, uh, so he was shut down for the first four weeks. Tariko did talk about the that the Chiefs' expectation as of right now is as soon as week five to yeah. have him back. All right. Uh, Kendra Miller, eligible to return from the hamstring after week four. <laughs> He's to the dog cat. Is he? Ricky Pearsall would be eligible. DJ Chark. Jonathan Brooks would be eligible to return in week five from the PUP. I think it's going to still be a little bit. Yeah, same with Hawkinson. Uh, he would be eligible, but they're targeting a week seven return, according to Jeremy Fowler. Hawkinson will be a hard one to figure out 
what to do right away, but look at your other options right now. They, yeah. I mean, I was going to say you start right away. I am right starting. Away. I'm starting Hawkinson in his first week. Yeah. It, it, pro probably. Probably. I mean, if, if I've got Kincaid and he's looking good or if I've got McBride, okay, whatever. But mo more than likely, the, the team that has picked up Hawkinson to wait for him or drafted him as a second guy they don't they don't have a great option so when he's back maybe he's averaging five yards of reception but if he's getting five or six receptions a game great he's the tight end one <laughs> just funny to think that this team that looks so good right now Addison should return yeah this week and then Hawkinson will return at some point so the wheels are going to fall off right that's what yeah I pumpkin town uh, that was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. We'll take a break and then hit the waiver wire. All righty. Let's jump in. Welcome to the waiver wire presented by NFL Sunday Ticket on YouTube TV. All right, if you want a fully custom waiver wire rankings for your league, jump into the ultimate dashboard. You can do that at jointhefoot.com. We will be we have more names in that waiver list than we'll talk about on the show. We try to keep the names that we talk about on the show to, you know, 50% or or less roster percentage. We don't want to talk about names that are probably rostered in the majority of leagues. So that doesn't mean that they're not available in yours because if it's an 85% roster, there's 15% of leagues that he's not rostered. But today, I want to start at the running back position. I kind of want to just share where I'm at with a couple of names and then get out of the way and let you guys talk about where you're at. At the tippy top of our list right now, under 50% rostered, but really close to that number, Braylon Allen and Bucky Irving, both I think are great pickups. Braylon Allen's the backup running back in New York, a rookie. Bucky Irving, a rookie in Tampa Bay. Both have looked awesome on limited opportunities. I have Bucky Irving ranked higher than Braylon Allen. Both should be picked up. If both were out there, I'd put bids on both of them. Mm -hmm. The only reason I have Bucky Irving higher is because I think the the disparity between Brees Hall and how foundational his role is and the, dis the difference between that and what Rashad White can do between the tackles, dealing with the groin injury, and the fact Bucky Irving could catch passes and earned more targets. Like I went, I went back. I watched every snap of of Bucky Irving, every opportunity okay. from week one, two, and three. Um, I think Braylon Allen is a better football player than Bucky Irving, but I think that Bucky Irving has a lot of juice. He's looked really good, and it's been a progression. He's looked better each game, and certainly looks more shot out of a cannon than Rashad White does right now. So I have him slightly higher. Yeah, I, when I looked at these two guys, I just went back and forth. I'm like, man, which one would I really pick up first? Um, and the similarities are crazy, right? They were both, you know, they both fell in drafts a little bit further than some of the NFL draft time hype was about both of these players. They're both backups and, you know, 32% of snaps for each player last week. Three targets, three receptions. 13 yards and 14 yards for these guys last week. They both were about 10 carries and both really efficient on their carries. The truth is Bucky Irving has more opportunity to steal the role. And if you want someone who you think you need a flex play, I am more confident in Bucky Irving. But if this is a stash type of player where you're just wanting someone that is talented who maybe could, you know, really come into their own then I think I'm on the Braylon Allen side because should an injury happen to either of these players, or let's just say both, and by both I'm, I mean Rashad White and Brees Hall, if both those players go down, Braylon Allen has the body type mm -hmm. to, I, I think, really truly break fantasy. I don't know that they would give Bucky Irving the entirety of the work. Um, he's a smaller back. He's still uh, very, very good. And so I kind of go back and forth. Right now in my rankings, I do have Irving, like you, Andy, one spot ahead of Braylon Allen, but I think it's really just a matter of what you're looking for. Both should be picked up, and and in the most competitive leagues, I, I'm, I was shocked to see that, like on Sleeper right now, they are still available in more than 50% of leagues because I thought like these guys should be rostered in 80-90%. I, I have Braylon Allen ahead um, just watching – you know him go from two opportunities to eleven to fourteen. He's not. I agree with everything you guys are saying. Of he won't overtake Brees Hall, but there is a chance that this is just this is what they want the offense to be. 
where it's it's bound, a, a an RB two is actually part of what's going on. So those are the two big names. There are some other uh, kind of stash keep in the back of your mind. Like Emmanuel Wilson is the backup for Josh Jacobs, and he was the backup to the tune of twelve for fifty, including a uh, a long touchdown pass as well. Played forty one percent of snaps, and this was you know impressive to see. And then Justice Hill's going to get a lot of work in Baltimore as well. You know when you need an emergency situation, those two players. Right now, look like if you threw them in, you might get lucky. Emmanuel Wilson has looked really good on a per he touch has. basis to me as well. Um, this is the Green Bay system that, while the first two weeks we saw Josh Jacobs just getting everything, we know that Lafleur wants to run a more of a committee approach, and they did this last week. It's a tough matchup coming up, but I, you know he's not that far behind Braylon Allen and Bucky Irving as far as opportunity. The difference is there will be a time where Marshawn Lloyd comes back off the IR. And so then that makes Emmanuel Wilson's future a little bit more murky. But he he should definitely be rostered. Did you guys watch Jacksonville play football last night? Uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, yeah. Yeah, well, uh, if Joe Mixon were to miss this next week, Cam Akers will get another opportunity. And Akers did not struggle in terms of like, okay, they went and they ran their game plan and then Akers couldn't execute it. It was like we just didn't have the opportunity to hand the ball off because we were turning it over to Minnesota and then down by a million. He only had nine carries. He did catch a touchdown. Uh, pass so Cam Akers as a spot start candidate probably really cheap probably really ignored on your waiver wire yeah he's I mean we, we have we don't have an update yet for Joe Mixon on this week so that would be a, a speculative ad uh, the two guys I want to highlight for this is these aren't players that you're that you're probably picking up and putting right into your lineup but it's a watching how things are trending Rico Dowdle is available in half of leagues and he has – he's the lead guy now. Like, Zeke is being phased out. It hasn't – again, it's not a lot of work yet. Eight for 32, but five tar – eight for 32 on the ground, five targets where he – it it's ramping up for Rico at the moment. And we'll, I don't know if we'll ever get to the point where they just fully go, okay, Rico, you're going to be the guy for the game. We're going to give you, you know, 60% of the snaps – but if they do, then he will be very valuable because he's he's already the the pass catching guy, and if they give him the goal line work as well, and the Cowboys figure things out, he could have a ton of value. And then Roshan Johnson for the Chicago Bears, DeAndre Swift has been horse doo doo. It's been really really bad, and Roshan has quickly in the three weeks went from a healthy scratch in week one. I believe he was active week two, but didn't get on the field, and then to thirty seven percent of the snaps and thirteen opportunities. They're searching for week. something. They are. That's and that's the point. I don't know that you could play Roshan. Look, the matchup against the Rams, it's that's okay. But it's more of a put him on the bench and see what happens with the opportunities. Do they start moving the dial even more of Swift versus Roshan? We also know that Jalen Warren is getting in MRIs, so Car Cordero Patterson yeah. could be a cursory out, especially with some rumors around this injury to Najee. And, would, with, and with the matchup against Indianapolis. Would you drop Javante? Oh, man. Wow. I still, I'm going to give you the drop candidate names that we're hearing. Goodness. I still would not drop Javante. Yeah, I, think, I think we're probably one more week, but if, if he gets – Splashed by the bidet one more week, it's it's a big problem. And then you have uh, an, an Audric Estime is a week six return, potential return. Hey, I think that the time is running out for Javante. DeAndre Swift. No. Yeah, I'm, I'm not still going to hold on to him as Zemir well. Zamir White. Zamir White, I am far more willing to drop. Like for he, Allen and Bucky, would you yeah, drop? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, okay. I would, if, if there's a good name out there, then I would take uh, Zamir because he, he only played 22% of snaps this last week. The Gus Bus and Jalen Warren. Gus, I'm going to hold on to. Uh, Warren, I'm going to hold on to. Man, it's so difficult with the injury. And the, the last, I mean, we talked about Clyde Edwards Alaire real quick, but deeper leagues. Maybe you, don't, you just have one spot and you're like, I'm not going to spend anything right now. He's worth an ad right now because he will be the hot ad next week. So you can get out in front of it. You guys want to talk wideouts? Please. Yeah. Juwan Jennings is going to top the list. It's mm -hmm. gonna He's going to top the fab bids this week. No question about it. Is that because of the 11 for 175 and three touchdowns? It's mostly correlated to his statistical output. Yeah. Gotcha. We, I mean, we, we, we don't know the health of George Kittle. 
Uh, we don't know the health of Debo either. So that how are you guys playing Jawan? Not knowing any of those things because if those two guys come back, Jawan is still a fine pickup. But I mean, are you going to burn a top priority? So, or are you going to invest with heavy? those guys healthy? He was five for sixty four in week. Yeah, he, in yeah, week he'll, one. He'll still be involved, but that and that's also part of the 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 lack of production for Brandon Ayuk, where if he ramps up, which he should, then that would theoretically remove Jawan from the offense when everyone's ready to go. Yeah, I the way that I'm moving forward right now is I I believe that they will both miss another week. Uh, George Kittle was a late week hamstring, uh, missed the game, was ruled out a little bit early, so I don't I don't expect Kittle back. <laughs> and um, I, I think both these I think both these players are going to miss one more game. So if I'm looking at my waiver wire, Juwan Jennings is like I'm I'm getting him. I'm okay. going to start him this week. That's how I'm approaching it. Would you pick up Quentin Johnston after the one touchdown, but only two catches? He is, or would you pick up Darnell Mooney if you had the choice? Who eight targets, eight for sixty six, two straight good weeks. I, I love Mooney. I, yeah. I think I might pick up Mooney over Jawan Jennings just because it could be more rest of season. Um, I mean, seven targets last week, um, had 88 yards and a touchdown, eight targets this next week, um, 66 yards. He's very involved, and I think he's a good player. Like He's proven yeah. over the course of years he is a serviceable wide receiver, too, for his team, and they they need someone. Huge, meanwhile, plays Kansas City this week, probably with – no Herbert, or possibly with no Justin Herbert, and it's Kansas City. They will remove. They've been removing number one wide receivers. If you score, a, you're happy. Yeah. If you don't score in Los Angeles, you have a miserable day. But so huge after the terrible matchup with Kansas City. Then it's the bye week. Can't start in there. Then it's on the road against Denver, which I would assume he will get the Sertan experience from Denver. So this is this is three weeks that you're probably not trying to play him this is this will be a deeper league you're adding him hoping in a month that things are okay over the last two games played for darnell mooney his 17 game pace would be 93 catches for 1300 yards and eight touchdowns yeah baby so he's been playing well which you know mike in the off season went back and watched a bunch of darnell mooney last year to see was this a fields was this a mooney what was it um concluded heavily that it was fields yes so nice to see mooney performing and he becomes you know, Kirk Cousins is going to have favorite options in this offense, and right now Mooney's looking like that. Jalen Naylor, he got back into the end zone, but he only had 3-4-31. He is losing his spot to Jordan Addison returning this week, so I think, you think I would let somebody else chase Jalen Naylor because okay. I don't want a third wide receiver option in Minnesota. You think Addison is back this week? That's the report that I had read. Oh, okay. I I, I hadn't seen that. I, I Normal timeline, you know, if you miss a game, you miss, uh, you know, three with the high ankle. Um, I was thinking you might have one week left of Jalen Naylor. He's, he's looked all right, but yeah, if Addison's back, then I'm out. The coach uh, reported they were hopeful of his week four status. Uh, so Kevin O'Connell said he's optimistic he will be available to play Sunday in Green Bay. That's what the report was as of yesterday. Um, I, I think, you know, a guy that I want to look at and a, really a team I want to look at is the Packers getting Jordan Love back. Romeo Dobbs is available in, in a lot of leagues. Uh, Dontavian Wicks has kind of started encroaching on Christian Watson's numbers. We don't know exactly what to make of what this offense we've seen the last two weeks is, but I do think when Jordan Love is back, this offense is going to really be a you know definitely a top 10 offense and so if there are pieces of a top 10 offense sitting on waivers because they're not ready yet I would try to scoop those up now I've never been as as a, much of a Dobbs fantasy believer as much as I think he helps teams but I understand taking the shot I mean when would you feel confident starting a Dobbs or a Wicks um is Dobbs, it just a, a week to week Dobbs, Dobbs, miracle I would, play? No, Dobbs I would be confident playing for what he is, which is like a low end flex option as soon as as soon as Love is back. Dobbs is clearly he's the the snap leader. He's on the field. He's he's got the opportunities to score. He's looked at around the end zone. I don't see him as a um, you know, some superstar. Like Dontavian Wicks, I think his ceiling is higher than than Dobbs. But Dobbs, I'm much more confident in like you can put him out there most weeks and and be okay when you've got um, 
when you've got Jordan Love back. Green Bay right. has Minnesota this week, but then we get the Rams, Cardinals, Houston, Jacksonville, and Detroit. So it, either way, I mean, if it, even if it's a tough defense, it should be a higher scoring game against those teams because they're going to have good offenses, and then they'll they'll beat up That's on like a, Jacksonville. That, well, you just said with the schedule is a trade for Jordan Love, like could be. Try to go get him right now because a lot of quarterbacks are disappointing. Are you chasing either of the one week wonders, Trey Tucker or Calvin Austin, who had uh, big games? Four for ninety five and one for Austin. Trey Tucker seven for ninety six and one for Trey Tucker. Trey Tucker would be the I'd prefer him over Calvin Austin. Uh, it's not going hard in the paint after him, but I mean he's in his second year. He had all of the hype. I mean, he's a round three wide receiver in his second year. He had all the hype of the off season, and so I think that he is he's okay to put on the bench and see what happens. What about drop candidates, Michael Pittman, dude? Oh man, yeah, yeah. serious. We built this city. It, Michael, it's not you. I don't blame you at all. Hey, this is an Anthony Richardson problem. I don't think I would drop Michael Pittman, but if you're considering dropping Michael Pittman, I would very much look to package trade him. He has a big name, draft capital, target share, all those things. And I totally understand. I'm not oh not starting Michael Pittman. I just feel like he you know, he's one of those guys that I think you can get more from than just what like like the names that we're talking about, Darnell Mooney. I really like Darnell Mooney. Would I like Darnell Mooney more than than Pittman? If I was making a start this week, I would certainly start Mooney over Pittman. Mm -hmm. But like, I don't, I don't think that the the gap there is enough to just pump them straight to the waivers versus trying to get something for them. Oh, hate Cliff, blockers coming Cliff is on. Back. I'm putting the glasses back on because what I have to say is it's not gonna, it's not gonna go well, and I need protection. If you're in a dynasty league, would you rather have Jaden Daniels or Anthony Richardson? Jaden Daniels at this point. There's no question to me. Yeah. One of them looks like an incredibly competent quarterback right, right, but, right away in his career. The other looks like. That's not a, knee jerk. A, you know, Anthony Richardson's I, not, physical tools and abilities are probably superior in every way to Jaden Daniels. It's not a knee jerk because this is a conversation we've had the whole offseason. I mean, you brought up. I don't feel like uh, preseason it would have been Anthony Richardson by a mile. Yes. By a mile. Yes. And we're two, we're three games in. That's well, why I, you, you I'm say by a mile, but we talked about the draft value, the 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 overprice on Anthony Richardson. He had done nothing from last year to move from being a tenth round pick to a fifth round pick in fantasy. He did he he you know had two good games, two bad games, got injured. Um, versus Jaden Daniels, who has all the same resources. It's a different style. He's not as big bodied. You you don't think he's going to get the tush push, but he could have 750 rushing yards. Just as easy, if not easier, than Anthony Richardson. So I, I don't think it's really knee jerk. It's we, what we've seen on the field so far in three games from Jaden Daniels is that he's going to be like we're. I, I think you're confident he's going to be uh, an NFL quarterback, barring injury, for you know the next several yeah. years. Anthony Richardson, what we've seen so far this year is like we got some work to do. We we got the tools. We've seen some flashes. We got some work to do. Yeah, I think it's like. Again, Richardson is essentially a rookie, hasn't played a ton of football. He has – his traits are amazing. I don't know if the traits will ever pan out. He, Richard, I liked Richardson for fantasy football. I thought he would be much better than he's doing this year, uh, especially just in terms of running the ball. Um, but the pro, I hated the prospect. I, I'm not one of those – I'm not someone who says, I see all the traits, so I draft a guy in the top five. I Accuracy is – Different. Not everybody's Josh Allen. Yeah, accuracy, Lamar Jackson. Accuracy is very difficult to fix in the NFL. At least, the, but it, we've seen in we've my seen a couple big ones. And when, when it hits, when yeah. it hits, you get Josh Allen. You or get Lamar. You get the. I mean, one of the best quarterbacks in the league. I, Josh Allen right now, this year is the best quarterback in the league. Would you drop Keenan Allen right now? Um, no, I'm going to hold on. I'm very concerned about it, but the. Uh, you know, speaking of schedules, Rams, Carolina, Jacksonville, bye week, Washington, Arizona. So if things are going to go well for the Bears, it would be over the next four games. If I don't have an IR slot, 
and I've got to take up a roster spot and I need it, I would be willing to drop Keenan Allen. I don't I'm I'm he wasn't really good before the injury and you worry that the injury might hamper him the rest of season. Caleb Williams hasn't looked good. Uh, I think when he is back, when Keenan Allen is back, it's going to be one of those things where I don't want to start DJ Moore, Roma Dunze, or Keenan Allen. So I, I'm I'm fine just getting out of the mess. All right, we're going to take a break. We're going to come back with some tight ends. <laughs> All right. Uh, apparently, apparently we have to start a tight end. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. So who who are you going to pick up and and chase the, the last week's numbers? Chase the dragon. Um, the dragon that I would want to chase the most would be Cole Komet. Um, kind of right, feels like his career arc is doing this periodically to show up on her show. Yeah, the, and then disappearing for for sure. I mean, little Hunter Henry esque. When you look at the tight end position and and you you look at who can have big performances, they are big, strong, physical dominators. They paid him a lot of money. We've seen several big performances from him, so we know he's got the physical tools and capabilities. While Keenan Allen is not on the field, that we have seen a, an actual shift and a reason to believe that Cole Komet might be more involved. This is a system that you know wants to use the tight end, but they've been using Gerald Everett. And now, week one, it was like Gerald Everett. All preseason, it was Gerald Everett over Cole Komet. Week one, it was the same thing. And you're going, okay, Cole Komet's dead. And then the second week comes in, and you see a massive shift towards Cole Komet, and he's good. You know, He gets five targets, four receptions. And then this last week, they basically said, okay, Gerald Everett, the experiment is done. At least that's what it looks like. Snap-wise, route-wise, that's what happened. If that sticks, if if Gerald Everett is basically not a part of this passing offense and Keenan Allen is gone, I think Cole Komet, there's reasons to be excited. I mean, he, he had 10 for 97 and a touchdown. It's hard to do that. It's it, it's Keenan Allen related for me right now. Like Cole Komet could be a Band-Aid for you at the tight end position. It's possible. Again, just rattled off the schedule. It's very positive for Chicago and maybe figuring something out and get Caleb Williams, get him really going. But once Keenan is back, I guess that's a if Keenan is back, then I think with the three wide receivers, Cole Komet will be relegated back to the waiver wire. Other names? Uh, the other names are, uh, you, is it Conklin? I mean, he was five for 93. I, that was that was nice. It was a very surprising game. He is a, like, he's a full-time player, 92% of the snaps. I think that someone like Conklin, though, can easily just be Five for twenty four, like or or just you know something really low, or one for six, or one like for week six. one, and one for ten, like week two. I I, yeah. I, I don't think I'm going to play in that fire, especially as Mike Williams is getting healthier. Mike Kosicki would liked... be the guy for me. Um, I, he does steam still involved, still had steam? five targets. Yep, he steams. He steams still. He steams still. <sighs> um, you know, I I'm not excited about any of these guys. Um, you could talk about Zach Ertz, who was so clutch. So important to the commander's offense. Such a big role. Late when it mattered, all these deep shots, five targets, five receptions, and then you look and it's like, wait, he only had 38 yards? <laughs> I feel you, like it was really important to this you, team. Did you catch the play? They really highlighted it where Jane Daniels did not find my man. The, the senator. The, yes. the senator was out there for a humongous play, and Jaden did not let it rip. They brought him in for him like he was the design yeah. on that play because he's not he's not playing a ton of snaps not running a lot of routes man if they if he if he let that ball go that would have been exciting yeah he would have had a 50 60 yard touchdown uh I, I like Conklin a little bit more than than the argument that you made against okay. him uh I know Mike Williams is probably not going to be a high volume player there and I I just think that if Rodgers finds something that works he may go back to it Rodgers looked real good so I and he's all you know Conklin's in every snap tight end so that help that helps I will say this usually when it comes to picking your tight end matchup is more important than you know the talent the tight ends on the waivers aren't you know you're not being like well Kelsey's so right. strong um the Denver Broncos at least last year adjusted for schedule they were 28th against tight ends so that is a good matchup if you want to go the Conklin route you drop a Mark Andrews people want to no, know no no Defensive starts this week. I love Tennessee against Miami and whoever they decide to start with at the quarterback position. Makes sense. 
Uh, I like Houston against uh, Trevor Lawrence's ever spinning uh, pirouette of sacks. That makes sense too. I like the Raiders and Max Crosby having twenty sacks against Deshaun Watson this week. Can I, I, can I be honest? I probably am not. I'm so upset about what happened with Las Vegas last yeah, week I that I am terrified to roll them back up there because they they give up 36 points to Andy Dalton, did nothing to sack the quarterback. I completely. And Crosby's hurt I, for for what it's worth. Wait, he is. Yeah, he, well, he, he was, did play. He was questionable. He did play, but he's battling injury, is what I'm saying. Yeah. Oh, okay, gotcha. Well, all I know yeah. is every single time that Deshaun Watson drops back to pass, mm. he is inundated by a pass rush. It way more like if you look back at Week Two. Right, week two, the protection for Bryce Young was the best in the league, number one. Like they were protecting him, and so that's the line that Crosby had to go up against. Versus, I mean, they've goodness given up. Gracious. They're they're the worst defense in fantasy football. Oh, I, I the Raiders are dead last. They're I, like the worst start. Impressive. I, I can I can believe that. I'm just focused on sacks against Deshaun Watson, who leads the league right now in sacks taken. I mean, last week. We watched it. Every single drop back. Some of it was his fault. He held onto the ball too long. Some of it was the offensive line's fault. But regardless, and I think they lost more starters on the line. So it, it's playing with fire. It's a bad defense if you want to call them a bad defense. But they were great last year. But man, Watson just looks like he's w willing to take the other team's defense and make them good. The Saints against Atlanta seems like a great start. Should Atlanta has be? not put up a lot of points. And the Saints, I think, are the number one defense right now in terms of fantasy points produced. Also, uh, they're very high if they're, if they're not number one. I also think the Rams-Bears game is going to be great for both defenses. You've got a really banged up Rams offensive line, and and they, they figured it out. They did some different things against the San Francisco 49ers this last week, but the Bears are a good defense. The Bears are going to be at home, and there's still a banged up offensive line. Conversely, the Rams defense – you know, yeah. against Caleb Williams, who um, has taken a ton of sacks as well and uh, has some inaccurate passes so far to start the season, I, I think you could put either one in your lineup. All right, that'll do it for the waiver wire. Um, we are going to get into our streaming quarterbacks in a moment. We want to thank NFL Sunday Ticket on YouTube TV. Watch every game every Sunday when you bundle NFL Sunday Ticket and YouTube TV. Sign up today at YouTube.com. Slash fantasy footballers, local and national games on YouTube TV, NFL Sunday ticket for out of market games, excludes digital only games, device and content restrictions apply. Breaking news. It's time to go home. <laughs> Adam, are you there? I'm here. I'm uh, fading. Oh, Adam Thielen. Yeah, I'm so happy you got that touchdown last week. Yeah. At your age. So proud of you. Yes. Hey, buddy, we're going to put you on the IR for a couple oh, of weeks. Oh, thank you. Yeah, the hamstring, you. the hamstring's starting to be like an old rubber band. And so I get it. We, it, it hurts. We'll rub some oil on that, give you a month off. But uh, the breaking news is Adam Thielen uh, being placed on the IR. I'll be back. All right, let's talk quarterbacks. Full stream ahead. Well, uh, even without Adam Thielen. I won't, I won't be there. Even without Adam Thielen. I'm going Andy Dalton at home against Dude. Cincinnati as my streamer this week. <laughs> playing a, his old team. What a world. A team that just, <laughs> they couldn't even come close to oh. stopping Jaden Daniels last week. Deontay Johnson, a new opportunity for uh, Xavier Leggett. Chuba Hubbard looked great in the in the running and the passing game. Uh, you know, this is, this is great. This is Dave Canales. Finally getting to execute an offense that gave you confidence in him as an offensive coordinator and head coach. And we haven't got to see any vintage Dave Canales until this last week who quickly came out and said, Andy Dalton's our quarterback. He gives us the best chance to win. Cincinnati's defense, I put it in quotes, 26th in points per game allowed, 29th in pressures, and they're at home. I mean, like, Andy Dalton's at home against Cincinnati. I'm going to go Geno Smith on the road against Detroit. Gino has looked pretty darn good. He's completing 75% of his passes, second highest in the NFL. He's becoming more comfortable with the Ryan Grubb system. You've got, you know, the the big week two game from JSN, at least in the pocket for, you know, that slot wide receiver against this Detroit matchup that should work out. You cannot run. You cannot run on Detroit. Uh, Zach Charbonnet uh, cannot run on anybody. So I think they're going to throw the ball a lot. They're going to need to keep up. And, and honestly, he's been – Pretty good. I think Geno's looked really well this year. That uh, looked really 
Yeah, that's like right. Like he's playing well? It, it looked like he's playing well. Are you so, talking about like his health? Yeah, he like, that would be well. like. Yeah, he, he also looks so <laughs> healthy. Um, but, you know, this this last week had a down week, but that was against Miami's backups where, you know, the they held Miami to three points. That's not one where you're going to need to throw. Against Detroit, you're going to need to throw. He was the quarterback seven week one, the quarterback five week two. I think you can definitely start Geno. I, I like Geno a lot. I like Dalton a lot. And I will throw out Justin Fields again because he's still not being rostered. Uh, again, I'm presuming that he will be the starter for the, the Pittsburgh Steelers here in week four because they're 3-0. and And Justin Fields is – He's managing the games extremely well. He is completing 73% of his passes. And this was actually a good passing game uh, this past week for him against the Chargers. 245 yards. He had the passing touchdown. It's because uh, he leaned, leaned on superstar Calvin Austin. Well, <laughs> well, part of that is that Van Jefferson um, got injured, So I, which I think is good for Justin Fields. He's a good blocker. He's like one of those route runners that's not going to get targets, not going to do anything in the actual counting stats. Calvin Austin could take one to the house. Um, I doubt we'll see Roman Wilson soon. Some of the things Mike yeah, Tomlin. Healthy and active. Well, yeah, the, uh, Mike Tomlin was asked, like, what do you have to do? To, you know, what does he have to do to get his helmet? Because I think Roman Wilson is a, v a very good player. I'm very excited to see him on the field. I think it'll be good for Justin Fields when he gets on the field. But Tomlin is an awesome coach. He's just about winning. And he basically said, he said, he's just got to keep working. It's hard to get on a moving train, and we're moving. Like, he wasn't there for camp, so he's he's going to still probably take a couple weeks. But Fields is playing against the Colts, and the Colts defense giving up the second most yards uh, allowed per game. And we we still haven't seen the – while we're seeing, like, good game manager, Justin Fields, we haven't seen the, the performance where he goes out and he rushes for, you know, 70 yards and a touchdown, but he's he's serviceable if you're trying to stream. I like that. All right, tomorrow I said we're going to talk trades. We're going to talk trade away, trade four, any updates to the news, and a whole lot more. And then Thursday, Friday, back into the matchups, the starts of the week, the wheel of shame. Hee, hee, hee. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, oh, man. It's not me. My, oh, it's, oh, it's, me, either, it's me, guys. My, you know uh, when you're playing on DraftKings and they give you a little, like, a fire emoji? Or, they give or you the, the ice. Or the ice. Yeah, you've never seen ice <laughs> like was in my lineup uh, the 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 catastrophe that was week three i had all of you that. had all this of is the like the yeah. day after tomorrow the movie yes that, that oh promo. yeah it was a flash freeze okay very nice and don't forget to check out the waiver wire tool it is a great great resource it will sync with your leagues so you can connect them and see who is on your waivers and see it even shows what teams have the guys that are rostered that like you know you're like ah dang it I wanted to pick him up and this this team has them. Join the foot.com to check that out. That's part of the ultimate dashboard. We will catch you tomorrow. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you for tuning in from the Ring of Honor. <laughs> I'm saying goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.